So in this lecture, we'll expand on the circular flow model into a five-sector model. So before we talked about the circular flow as only being consisted of two models. So the first flow we had was the flow of resources from households to businesses. So we have flow one, which was the flow of resources. Then we had businesses buying this flow. So flow two representing the flow of incomes. So businesses buying back or buying the resources that households offered up to them. And this is in the form of income. So we had flow two. So what the households did with this um, income was to consume goods and services. So that was flow three in the form of the consumption of goods and services. So flow three, let's pull it up here, flow three. Flow three was the consumption of G plus S. And to consume goods and services, businesses must then provide for the good, goods and services. And this reflected in flow 4 and the final flow of the circular flow model, which was the flow of final goods and services. And consumption of goods and services could also be written as aggregate demand. And so in the two-sector flow model, we only had aggregate demand being consumption because only households consumed. But now in the five-sector flow model, this is a more realistic model pertaining to economic activity. So what the five sectors are is we have the households, businesses, the financial sector, the government sector, and the overseas sector. So let's see what each of these sectors does. So we, as we know from the previous lecture, the household sector comprises of all members of the population and they supply resources, natural land, labour and capital to business firms and use the money provided by the business in order to purchase goods and services. So businesses, the business sector purchases or demands resources from households which are then converted into final goods and services reflected in flow 4. And these are only seen as Australian households and businesses. So this does not include the overseas sector. The third sector that we'll talk about in this lecture is the financial sector. And what the financial sector is, is that it, makes up, it is made up of many different types of financial institutions. So let's put this in blue here, or asterisk. So what the financial sector is, is the many different banks, financial companies that operate in the market, which we we'll call also um, authorised deposit taking institutions or non-authorised deposit taking institutions. And the final definition of what what is consisted inside the financial sector. And so as we know in the in the two sector model we assume that the households consumed everything so they didn't even bother saving but now in the three sector model including the financial sector we're going to say that okay the households in the economy are going to save a certain amount of their income and we'll talk about why households save in another lecture on savings but we know that everyone saves money and so we have a marginal propensity to consume we have a MPC, let's say, marginal propensity to consume. And this re represents the proportion of income we spend. And so everything else is saved in the financial sector. So this represents our savings. And so businesses now can use the savings pool to actually invest. So that, that represents the investment expenditure in the economy. So what this means is with our savings, businesses cannot invest because since everything is consumed, they must use the incomes to pay for everything 
that is demanded by from households. So if households save then, then not all the income, then all not all the income will be spent on final goods and services. And so some of the income will be saved and businesses can use can borrow from the financial se sector so they can borrow from banks, take out loans and invest in land or invest in capital research and development and efficiency promoting practices. So as we can see we need savings in order to invest. And so now the aggregate demand equation has in fact expanded out into aggregate demand equals consumption which is flow 3 or this flow in green here plus investment expenditure which is this flow in the financial sector. So now we can talk about the government sector. So the government sector is where the government collects revenue in taxation. So we, as we know that not all our income can be spent because we have to pay taxes to the government. So this is taxation. And what the government uses in tax, they are going to inject back into the economy in the form of government spending. And as we know, government spending can be separated into G1, which is current spending, and G2, which is government capital spending. And as we can see now, this is then injected, injected back into businesses. And lastly, we have the overseas sector. And what the overseas sector does is that the overseas, we export to people living outside of the country, so non-residents, and we import from non-residents as well. So that helps us improve our material living standards as well by that token. So we have an outflow of economic purchasing power in the form of imports and an inflow in the form of exports. So now we can see that aggregate demand is actually a component of C plus I, which is investment expenditure, plus G, which is government expenditure, plus net exports, which can be broken down into exports minus imports. So why do we take away the imports? So this is because imports are leakages of purchasing power from the economy. And this means that because businesses supply, or because households supply um, a flow of resources to businesses and businesses pay for it, these, this flow of resources in the form of incomes, because households don't actually spend all their income in domestic businesses, therefore the income in the economy that the businesses pay to the households is actually leaked from the economy. So it's actually leaked in the form of imports because um, overseas producers benefit from us importing from overseas goods and services. And so we can see that everything here, S plus T plus M, so savings plus tax plus imports, are considered leakages or withdrawals of purchasing power from the economy. So this means the income is not injected back into businesses, is actually leaked. And on the other hand, we have, let's just cross this out, okay, so on the other hand, we have I plus G plus X, and that represents the injections back into the economy. And so flow three, which encompasses the blue, the light blue, the red, the pink, and the green flows, represents the total value of expenditure in the economy. So it's not just consumption of goods and services, it is in fact now the total planned expenditure in the entire economy. So that consists of C plus I plus G plus X minus N or net exports NX. Okay, so that is what the circular flow or the five sector model of the circular flow is all about. And so we talk about households and businesses in the two sector flow model. Now we're adding three more sectors which are the financial sector, the government sector, 
and the overseas sector. So now, now we know that not all incomes are actually injected back into the economy. We have leakages in the form of savings, taxation, and imports. And we also have injections back into the economy in the form of investment spending by businesses, government spending, government current and government capital, or non-current expenditure, and also exports to other countries demanding our goods and services.